Let's take a look at an ultraviolet attracting sticky board indoor glue trap. The instructions with this are actually pretty good. They, they are written in proper English. It's not sort of a, a bad translation. And it's got all the usual safety warnings saying that, you know, it's for indoor use only. Don't use it near water and stuff like that. And it also um, says that it's mainly aimed at catching things like fruit flies, house flies, moths, gnats and more. Anything that's going to be attracted towards the ultraviolet light. It doesn't make the false claims about the mosquitoes. So this thing uses these little cards. And the idea is that you peel off the cover, revealing a sticky surface. And if I tilt this, I don't know if you'll see this. Are you going to be able to see? You're not really going to see it. The adhesive is sort of like painted on over a sort of a square area around these sort of like these blue squares. They're the sticky bit. And you slide it on like this and then you plug it into the wall and it bathes the wall in ultraviolet light. Again, it says that don't try and compete with other light sources. This is going to work best at night time. Just plug it in with no other bright lights in the room and it should attract them. I shall put that out of the way. I didn't realise it was going to come with two of these boards because it didn't say it was going to come with two of these boards. So I ordered more. And uh, they cost, for five, it cost about as much as the unit itself. So that's not great. However... If you were very creative, you could get one of the boards that has not been used and just use it back to front. And you could uh, put some double side tape in it. And you could effectively just use standard sticky back sheets like this, which you can get in bulk. And uh, they're very sticky and they're in large pieces. So you could improvise. Even an elastic band would hold that on. Anyway, let's plug this in. I'm going to have to make sure I don't put my hand on it. Uh, that just did. Uh, let's put the the film back on it. That's probably going to work well. Let's see if I put it on the right way around. So I chose the UK version, which came with this adapter. It also says that you can rotate the plug, but you can't. It doesn't rotate. Let's plug it into the anti, which is better at small loads. Well, I will say there's something that I'm filled with doubt about because looking at the LEDs, it does look like they're on parallel and that's not how you'd normally run them on a um, capacitive dropper if that's what the circuitry is using. So I shall plug this adapter in here. I shall plug this in here. It glows that fetching vanity look. It's not bad. Um, power is 0.5 watts. It is 53 milliamps, which is high quite high current and it's a super bad power factor that so suggests it is a capacitive dropper and it also suggests they're running all the LEDs in parallel instead of series which you'd normally do in a capacitive dropper how strange anyway let's whip it apart but the power is low that's the main thing the power is low unless you are being metered for uh, apparent power when in this case it would be 0 0.053 times 240 equals, it would actually be charged out as 12 watts. It's not too bad. Let's open it and see what the circuitry is like. It's certainly a basis for an idea. I mean, you can make a USB-powered one with just standard violet LED tape. Now, there are screws up here. Hopefully, I won't have to remove all the screws because there are three down here that suggest the plug itself will... Come off, except this one, which might just be rotating. It's a capacitive dropper. Okay, does it have a discharge resistor? It looks like it does. I should give it the finger test. It does. Let's slip the circuit board out. Oh, the whole thing comes out like this. And there's the little, is that glass? That's actual glass. It's not plastic. Wow, that's odd. How strange. But here is the little circuit board that should theoretically have been in series, but you can see from the back that they are just all wired in parallel. How odd. I wonder why they did that. It would have been, they could have used a much smaller capacitor and uh, it would, could have used much lower power. It could be much more efficient the way it operated. But anyway, I shall pop the circuit board out and I shall reverse engineer it. There's not a lot on it, so I may just go straight to the schematic for this one. So I shall do that right now. One moment, please.
Reverse engineering is complete. Let's zoom in and explore. The super observant of you will have seen my latest toy that I bought from AliExpress. It's a little measuring device that if you set it into the capacitance mode, it's quite handy for testing things like surface mount components. So say, for instance, I can go in and just put it across this little capacitor here and get an indication of its value, which it says is roughly 3.4 microfarads. Closest standard value to that is about 3.3 microfarads, I think. Interesting little tool. Ideal for surface mount components because it is fairly robust with well-lined probes. It's a Zoye ZT-MD1. But anyway, I shall explore that more. It's not a be-all and end-all tool, but it's quite useful for surface mount. So the circuitry has no great surprises, but, you know, it does have an air of professionalism except for the parallel wiring of the LEDs. We have a 47-ohm fusible resistor, which also acts as inrush limiting. We have a huge 680 nanofarad, 450-volt dropper capacitor with a generous 750k discharge resistor across it to avoid tingles. We have the bridge rectifier. We have a Zener diode that clamps the supply from going above about 5 volts. And then we have that little surface mount capacitor, which I estimate at 3.3 microfarad value. Uh, there then is another resistor, 47 ohm, and then all the LEDs in parallel. Now, if they'd put these in a series, they could have used 100 nanofarad. They could have just put a big chain of LEDs in series, done away with the Zener diode and said, what the heck? If they fail, the little capacitor may pop, who knows? Or just done away with the capacitor completely um, and just had a slight shimmer. I don't know how that affects the flies, if the flies have been more attracted to pulsing ultraviolet light. Not sure. But an interesting thing. All in, it cost about $10, of which about 6 was the unit and 4 was the replacement pads. But as I say, you could improvise the pad yourself. Heck, you could even get a bit of USB-powered LED tape and you could 3D print or just put a slot and a bit of wood and you could put it along the back and just get sticky cards and stuff them into it and put it up against a wall. You could improvise yourself. Um, this is odd that they used glass. I wonder if that was just to prevent yellowing of the plastic with the ultraviolet, which does suggest this is a sort of reasonably well thought out product. But there we have it. There's not many flies in the house at the moment. I saw a few small fruit flies flying about, but that's about it. Uh, but I may put the, may plug this in. Um, the snag is my house has ambient lighting at all times, 24-7, just fairy lights everywhere. Uh, running at extremely low power, so it's hard to test that. But anyway, I may give it a go and see what happens. But there we have it, the little sticky back LED ultravioletish insect trapping thing. It's quite nicely made. It comes across as a really well thought out design.